Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'd like to go through the fetch to code execute cycle in a little bit more detail. This way we should understand what's happening in individual registers and parts of the CPU during each stage of this important cycle. Let's start with an overview of the fetch stage. The address of the instruction to be fetched is moved from the program counter and placed in the memory address register. The instruction is then transferred from memory to the memory data register. Next, the instruction that is in the memory data register is copied to the current instruction register. And then the program counter is incremented by one. If you're not sure what all these registers do, please look at the previous video. I believe that's video one in this series, and you'll get a little bit more detail about how all this works. Uh, but don't worry, I will go through this again in just a moment. Overview of the decode stage. The control unit reads the contents of the current instruction register. It checks that this is a valid instruction, i.e. it is part of the instruction set. So remember that each CPU has its own instruction set, which is a list of all the instructions that it can understand. If the instruction is not valid, then the program will crash. Hopefully it is a valid instruction, and it will then continue to the execute stage. Overview of the execute stage. The instruction is carried out by the CPU. This process may use the accumulator and the arithmetic logic unit, and may fetch additional data from memory during the execute stage. So for example, if you're adding two numbers together, it may have to go back into memory, fetch the second number in order to complete the calculation. So that's an overview of the fetch to code execute cycle. Let's go into more detail and just look at what's happening at each individual stage. So we're starting our program. Most of the registers are empty. The program counter is pointing at the next instruction. The accumulator is currently set to zero. There's no other value. So right now, the program counter, the PC, is pointing to the memory location, the memory address of the next instruction to be fetched. This address is then copied from the program counter into the memory address register. So from the program counter, we need to move that to the memory address register. That's the first thing that happens. The control unit can then load this address from the memory address register onto the address bus. So we can see, OK, that's on the memory address register. There is a read signal, and that can get transferred onto the address bus. And then we can go to our RAM, our main memory, and then locate location 305 in the main memory. And there we can find the contents that are held in that memory location. Now the contents of that memory location, the instruction add 5, can then be copied via the data bus into the memory data register. Because it's an instruction, it will then be copied from the MDR, the memory data register, to the current instruction register. And then at the end of the fetch cycle, we increment the program counter by 1. It goes from 305 to 306. Usually when we're running a program, this will continue to increment by 1, unless we're executing a jump instruction, for example, if we've got an if else if block of code, and maybe the program counter will be changed during the execute phase to a completely different address. But usually it'll just increment by one at the end of the fetch cycle. Now we move on to the code stage of the fetch to code execute cycle. Here the control unit reads the contents of the instruction register. This is, of course, add five. Now we move on to the execute stage because add5 is an instruction that the control unit understands. It's a mathematical operation, so we're going to use the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, and this is going to read the value from the accumulator and add 5. So therefore, the accumulator changes from 0 and becomes 5. Now, all of these steps just do a really simple instruction, add 5. We have to fetch the instruction, take it back to the CPU, decode it, and execute that. And if you imagine this is happening billions of times a second, 
every time you're running your computer so that all the software and all the apps that you're using can work correctly. It's a very complex procedure, but happens very quickly. Hopefully now you've got a better idea of what's happening at each stage of the fetch, decode, execute cycle, and you can describe what's happening to the contents of the registers at different points. Feel free to watch the video again. Make sure you've got some notes. Make sure you understand it. Join me for the next video. Good luck with your studies.